back to my youtube channel and today we'll be designing a leaderboard so this question has been asked in many product based companies like flipkart and uber and it, by the name you can see that it is just a simple leaderboard and you are assuming that this design should be very simple but no it is not as simple as it looks like okay so let's see what are the challenges which we feel which we face while designing a leaderboard okay let's see what are the first functional non functional requirements the basic and the most important functional requirement here is user ranking so we must tell the user uh, at what rank that particular user is and uh, this uh, should be done on basis of in a game like they can a user can be a, uh, can be associated with multiple games okay so we have to tell in which game he was at which rank so this is the main basic requirement which we'll be uh, solving here and uh, other requirements are they should be efficient read and write data should be consistent and we should be able to update all the real time uh, updates which are happening in our system plus if we want we can also provide multi uh, region support by this uh, what do we mean is we should be able to provide support all over the world and we can uh, create different data centers for that okay now comes to non functional requirement our read and write should be as low latency as possible plus our system should be highly scalable and highly available so we are expecting around uh, maybe 1 million of games to happen in in a day and for those games the updates reads and writes uh, will be happening throughout so we will be designing very high write throughput as well as very high read throughput system obviously read will be much more higher than the writes but yes writes will also be there okay so let's get started so as we've seen in the previous videos also we start solving problem by one by one at a time okay so if we see we have a very simple we'll create a very simple design where we will have a server which will accept all our requests and a database which where we'll save our data and we'll serve this our uh, request from this server but what type of database should we use so for simplicity i have used a sql db which will some look like this so here we have a user table which we have which will have details of a user like its name phone number and email id and then we'll have a game game uh, we in game we have can have what is a game name where it is being held and what what time this game is being played we can also have uh, one co more column text like what is the status of the game it is completed ongoing or it is cancelled and also we will have one table for players this player table is the association between game and a user so which user is playing which game will be marked in this uh, player table and also it will tell the score of that particular user in that particular game okay so like this we can have this but uh if we want to know like how many uh, games a user have played or let's say we will solve our first basic problem what is the rank uh, what is the ranking in a game so if we want to see what are the ranking in a game we what we have to do we have to uh, order by our score and in score since we, we are assuming that the most score is the play, player having most score should come at the first so we'll order by descending order okay like this uh, by this query we will able to fetch the player's name player id uh, by their uh, score order from highest to lowest Uh, and top ten players we are fetching as we had applied limit ten. Okay, so I think uh, this is uh, this game is perfect. This is uh, perfectly fine if you we have very less number of users here. Okay, but what if number of users, number of games kept on increasing? So for fetching the ranking, we will not be uh, fetching it. from the db every time then this query is expensive because it will be uh, sorting based on the score of that particular in that particular game and although we apply a index also then also it this query will be expensive because it is making a 
network call and it is scanning and then we are applying limits. So this is very uh, expensive query and it can become a bottleneck here also. So what we can do is uh, since our number of games and number of users are also increasing, we'll scale our system. So let's see how we can do that. So uh, this is uh, our system, what will it will look like. We can have multiple instances of our server plus master slave architecture in a DB if we are using a SQL DB and Redis. So why Redis? Uh, okay, so Redis here we have used for storing the ranking. Okay, so what we'll do is the, the, uh, the flow of data will go as it was going earlier. Uh, there will be server which will be uh, doing uh, ma managing requests and it will be saving data in this DB in the same format which I've shown earlier, but for fetching uh, the rank in a game, we will not be doing this query. Okay, so what else we will be doing? What we'll be doing is we'll be getting it from Redis. Okay, from Redis, how we'll get, what we can do is we can use sorted sets. So what sorted set does is it by default sorts your data based on the score you give provide it so let's suppose we have a sorted set named game one which is the name of our game we apply we apply this command so it will add this user one or we can provide id here and the score 10. so based on this it will arrange the number of it will arrange users based on the score which we are providing here this is score okay so like this, we, every time we can fetch our uh, list of uh, players based on the, their score sorted way from Redis itself. So this will uh, reduce our network calls, plus also make our system uh, free from bottleneck, which we were seeing earlier querying DB directly. Okay, but then also I can see a problem here. What problem? Um, what see what will happen every time we get a request to update a score so first of all it will update in db then it will update on redis and then it will return what about the scores are getting updated very fast okay and uh, the scores are getting of same user getting very fast plus multiple users for different users also the score is getting fast so they can be inconsistency and they can be bottlenecks because if we are writing and applying a lock, other users will not be able to write on that same particular row. So what we can do here. So this, since this is not very efficient, we can take help of a uh, queue. Okay. First of all, I've divided our game server and user server. Uh, so this user server will handle the login uh, creation of users and everything and this game server will be responsible for uh, all the operations which are required for a particular game. Uh, we can have the, like these APIs in our game server like create game, add play in that game, update score and also we can have get APIs similarly. So what this game server will do as soon as the request comes for update score now it will Push one message in this queue, and there's a consumer which is listening to this queue. And it this consumer Kafka consumer can do batch processing also, so it can pull message in a batch of maybe let's let's suppose we can say all the requests which are which came in 10 seconds, it will put, pull all the requests and see what all users I have got, and it will do a batch update not one maybe like uh, one <coughs> for one user the score is 10 now it has increased by it is incremental update okay so 10 plus 10 plus 10 minus 20 like this so this consumer will do increments and decrements for that user and do a one single update entry both in our redis plus in our database so how this uh, work we i have created a video uh, I will attach that link also where I've told how this batch processing work in fast real time incrementing decrement. You can go and watch that video also to understand better. Okay, so yeah, so for so see now our both responsibilities of servers are also different. We have user server and we have user DB separately, and we have game server and our game DB is also different. Okay, 
so now we can fetch all the users and uh, all the users uh, of that particular game uh, in a sorted order here now comes to the point uh, where let, let's say uh, i want to see the uh, ranking of one particular user what was his rank in a particular game okay so for that what can i do so so what for that as soon as game is getting completed now we'll fetch some sorted sets and we'll update in the db okay so i what can i do is i can update here uh, uh, I can update is uh, rank here, or or we can just simply run this query this time because this time this query is running only once. Okay, so since it is running only once, and we can rewrite to read a replica of uh, fetching uh, a score of that particular uh, game which is completed. Which this can be done separately in a read a replica, not for real time updates, not for real time when the game is going on. Okay, so that. We can do plus also we can um, have a TTL in Redis if data is in Redis uh, or we can cache it if it is it it is uh, being asked too many times. So we can decide whatever approach we want to use based on our requirement. Okay, we can do both both things. Plus, uh, what about if we want to get to know the rank of a user after game is finished I, on user basis only? Like what was his rank? So what we can do here is, as soon as when game will get finished now, we will uh, uh, push, uh, uh, as soon as game is getting finished, what we can do, we can do some uh, synchronous, uh, asynchronous um, processing of that game, where for every user, we'll tell what was the final uh, rank. Okay, so we can have one more column here of rank. So now if I want to see the rank of a user in all the particular game, so based on the user ID, I can fetch in which game it what was his rank. So I can show history here. So for that, when a game is getting over, we can update the rank that time only. Uh, because when the game is going on, we can fetch it. We can fetch the rank of a, that particular ongoing game from Redis and we'll restrict this behavior like if you want to see a rank of uh, all previous games you will be able to see only when the game is finished okay so like that we can give this functionality we can do uh, we can do some uh, type of uh, asynchronous processing here as soon as game is getting finished which will not impact our uh, main server we can add one more queue and one more consumer for that which will be doing that which will be responsible for updating the ranks in our database okay so i think uh, after the game is over although that that row will not be utilized by any other uh, for updating so we can uh, simply update rank there so yeah i think uh, for that we can have one more queue and one more consumer um, mm, yeah so i think uh, we have covered everything yeah. now comes our optional uh, function requirement which was for different data centers so what we can do is we can create different data center where uh, these all servers will be running on that data center only. If you want to see how data centers work, I have created a video in my system design concept playlist where I've told how to scale from one to billion users, a system which can have a handle billion number of users. You can go there and see how I have explained when and how to use data centers. That will be very helpful here. Uh, apart from this, I think we have uh, covered all our functional and non-functional requirements. We have separated responsibilities so that our system is highly available. We have databases for if we are using SQL DB, we can uh, uh, use master-slave re replicas so for high availability. Plus for consistency, we are using SQL DB so it will provide a consistency, highly scalable. We have added asynchronous queues, Kafka here. So yeah, I I will be creating more videos on how and when to choose SQL and NoSQL DB. How SQL DB we can uh, uh, scale, I've already created that video. You can go and check out my system day and concepts uh, playlist. And how, how and when to choose the SQL and NoSQL, I'll be creating that video soon. And also I'll be letting you know how Kafka internally works, why everyone chooses Kafka while dealing with uh, high scalable systems.
okay so, so till then let me know how did how did you like this video and if you want to see any other design video i'll come up with that also till then take care